viruses and how your antivirus lies to you constantly. There's a lot of false positives out there, and we need to talk about how antiviruses work and specifically what has happened to me specifically. I feel like I've almost been targeted, even though that's not the case. Uh, I've recently had a Trojan uh, flag that's happened on the actual uh, toolbox, Windows toolbox. Uh, Windows Defender yesterday, uh, March 28th, if you updated your system with the latest updates, specifically, I, I have the KB articles down there, they started flagging my version of the toolbox before I updated it through GitHub. The crazy thing about that update, I really didn't change any of the code. It just changed the hash, and then all of a sudden, things started working again, and the script is no longer flagged. But it begs the question, what is going on with antivirus in Windows? Because I'm not the only one. Uh, specifically, I got uh, this Trojan leak and people are like, oh, I'm going to submit this report and they did a virus total and look, it's a whole bunch of different Trojan detections and you know, seven out of 60 antiviruses flagged it as a Trojan. And this one, Trojan, Win32, Kazdit, RFN flagged it as an antivirus. I'm like, no, nah, it's a false positive. No idea what Microsoft's doing, but it ain't good. But I'm not the only one this is happening to. If we look on Stable Diffusion, one of the most popular AI image generating tools out there, it's free and open source. And when you build it, oh, the GUI in Stable Diffusion is flagging this as a Trojan. Win32, Kazdit, RFN. Eh, interesting. And this is just a simple Python script. And then I, I posted a screenshot of this. The script contains malicious content is blocked on your antivirus software. And the top comment is uh, from a developer called Jeremy. Microsoft also does this to every Python script that's packed with a packager that isn't signed after paying the extortion fee to the company. I went into package signing. I'll try and link the past video where I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. If you pay $300 and sign an executable, you can pretty much bypass any antivirus. So it's it's pretty much just a, a racket. But I don't want to do that. If we look, everything's still open source. If you want to know what tweak is being done, it's all right here. And I even broke it apart into separate JSON files. So if you only want to know what my tweaks are doing and you want to go, hey, I want to know what hibernation tweaks or activity history tweaks are being done. Here's all the registry edits that are done in plain JSON file. Everything is readable. Uh, if you want to just see what the script, the full script with all this combined into one, when you tilt PS1 is what's being run when you run that command. It's this script, everything you can read, it's simple PowerShell commands from Microsoft. You're not downloading things. So I'm like, oh, okay, what is happening? And uh, we'll get into the actual the thing, but uh, one more example, just to prove my point, curl.exe, one of the biggest devs out there has been blocked and, and quarantined by Microsoft Defender as well. Curl, curl is known in the open source community all over the place. Everyone uses curl and you can see uh, there, Brody made a video. Curl creator is sick of bogus CVE security issues. There's a blog post accompanying that saying, hey, what, what is these Windows users doing? Uh, you know, he's just really mad at the antivirus companies and rightfully so because he should not be getting flagged. And this kind of boils down to how antivirus works on Windows. Uh, well, there's, there's multiple different ways it's done. But really, the big thing is the heuristics that are done and what that means. The heuristic analyzation is basically it looks at viruses and how they do things. Then it takes bits of code and looks at your program and say hey, the same kinds of bits of code there. And if they are, maybe this is a virus. It might flag that as a virus, even though it's an innocent enough code. It just means that some virus manufacturer might have used that code somewhere in there. And I'll give you the good example of this. Let's let's load up Windows. And what I'm going to do from a fresh Windows, we'll close this, is I'm going to run my script, but I'm going to do it improperly. Normally, I just say run as terminal with admin and it elevates and runs. However, I've coded something in my script where let's say you want to run something in Windows, uh, my script, but you don't have proper elevation. You know, let's do an IRM. 
christitus.com forward slash win and pipe IEX to execute the script it downloads. And what this does is it goes out, grabs the script and goes, oh, you're not an administrator. It self elevates itself and runs it. Now you might be thinking, oh, well, Titus, it, should programs not self elevate? Well, yeah, they shouldn't, but Windows is designed by a crackhead. And, and basically there's a bunch of different ways to self elevate. And my program needs system access to do system tweaks. Makes sense, right? So if you go to tweaks and you want to disable telemetry, you want to disable a lot of system services, you want to disable how IPv6, the Toretto tunneling, because you, you don't want the conversion and extra latency going between IPv4 and IPv6. You, these are big system changes and you need administrator privileges to do those changes. It makes sense. But that also is going to be in a virus because a virus wants to make changes to your system as well. So that same type of code that's used for elevation is in a virus, but it's also in my script because, well, I need system access. So that's one thing. But there's also other lines of code that not very many people are doing. And if you, you, you do this and you run this in the future, this won't be here. So I'm going to just tell you what I have to kill to appease the antivirus gods. And that's gonna be disable UAC. This one's a big one. Uh, I don't like UAC that much. I find, hey, if I'm gonna run something, I know I wanna run it, but I understand UAC kind of exists to protect users and, and I, I get it. So I'm gonna to have to actually get rid of that. I'll have to do that tweak manually outside of my toolbox because I know antivirus is gonna see that and same thing, most viruses that run on your PC are gonna to wanna to disable UAC. So it makes sense that they look for that type of code. Also removal of mass removal of like AppX and, and Microsoft Edge. These are big system processes and I honestly don't recommend running them. And since I've gotten so many issues with these, I don't know if an antivirus will necessarily flag because of the mass removal, but honestly, I'm just tired of people getting giving me issues about it and going, ah, my system broke or I can't install. VS Code or, or Visual Studio or all the other things because I removed Edge. A lot of people don't realize if you're running Windows, you're running Edge because Edge has so many sub processes in the background. And if you click this and remove it, it likes to strip out like WebView 2 and all these other dependencies that, you know, so on and so forth. So I probably will remove these things from the toolbox. So enjoy them while they last, but it's not long for this world, mainly because of that problem I'm having. So that gets me back to here. Does Microsoft, are they, are they targeting me? Are they coming after the toolbox because they don't want telemetry disabled and people to strip down their, their windows? I don't think so. I honestly think it's just heuristic analyzation and the flawed nature of antivirus on windows. And, you know, I think uh, rightfully so. And I endorse this comment, honestly, on this video, just use Linux or Mac. Both aren't going to have this problem because they're actually designed in a Unix style environment where I'm just sick of Windows. A lot of times Windows and having to deal with this and then having, you know, get inundated by people saying I'm infecting them and I'm coming after them and I'm a bad actor because I'm giving out a free and open source piece of software that anybody can take, anybody can run, anybody can read and uh, not locking it behind a paid executable with a, a code sign binary where I pay the $300 and get the smart screen filter and all the other crap uh, that that's required to do that. Uh, it's just really aggravating. It, it is from a development standpoint, from just, you know, I, uh, the reason why I built this script was so you can have an enjoyable experience on windows. And, and this type of thing is, is just, really aggravating and why so many people move on from Windows and, and why Windows is going to continue to lose market share. Antivirus isn't going to save you. And if you're the type of guy that's like, I got to get my wares, I got to get my torrents in and get my free stuff. And uh, you want to engage in a bunch of risky activity. No antivirus is going to protect you either. It's, it's that mentality. And it's just it's aggravating. It really is. And, and I'm going to continue working on this. I'm going to continue, obviously, open sourcing it and 
keep going through, I just wanted to make this video just to say, man, I'm so fed up. I'm so fed up with Microsoft's antivirus. I'm just, the antivirus industry in general is just terrible. And you just don't run into that uh, on Linux or, or Mac. And I, I really hope more people switch because I, I really don't like where uh, Windows is headed and, and it's just in a downward trajectory. And there's a lot of things about that industry that's just nasty. But yeah, anyways, I'm done. I'm out of here.